All right, let's talk about the new snake hook brushes, which you can see I have lined up down the bottom of my screen. If you want to know more information on how to customize your interface, I know I've brought this up before, and hotkeys and stuff like that, you can go to my YouTube channel, go to the Intro to ZBrush Part 2 playlist, and it'll walk you through it. I'll give you the short and sweet version of that. All you need to do is I'm going to go to Preferences, Config, Enable Customize. You can hold down Control-Alt, and you can drag off anything you have in your interface you don't use. You're going to see I kind of cleaned up this area a little bit in here. And then if you want to add anything in here, say those new snake hook brushes, all you got to do is go to your brush menu. I double click these dividers to open up this divider side over here. I'm going to drag my brush menu in here. I'm going to go ahead and select them. Let's say, you know, I do have them selected here, but I'm going to go into this brush palette here and I'm going to select snake cactus, snake hook cactus, excuse me, snake hook, snake hook two, and snake sphere. And then I'll select the clay brush. So now you're going to see I have small icons available for me to drag over. So I'm going to take my snake hook, hold down control alt, and then just drag this down here. Next we'll do snake hook two. Next we'll do snake sphere. And finally we'll do snake cactus. And then once I'm happy with this, all I got to do is go over here to preferences, turn off enable customize, and then make sure you do a store config. So every time you open up ZBrush, all of this will be available to you down here. So now that I have these available for me, I can go into my snake hook brush. I can turn on Sculptures Pro mode. And like we've done before, let's go ahead and make sure X symmetry is turned on by hitting the X key. And now we can go through here and we can use snake hook to our heart's content. Now, if we go to the brush menu that we already have docked over here and we go to modifiers, you're gonna see we have a brush modifier. Right now, by default, snake hook is set to zero. If I choose snake hook two, you're gonna see that brush modifier leaps to 100. So what does this do? If I start dragging on my mesh, you're gonna see, if you only have one half of the thing of viewable, you're gonna see it doesn't, it seems to be just kind of making a point. If you drag around, you're gonna see, oh, it's actually pulling straight towards the camera. So essentially what you're telling this brush to do, and if we go back to our snake hook brush, we can have it behave exactly like snake hook two, just using this brush modifier. So select snake hook, and if you haven't docked them down at the bottom of the screen, all you gotta do is hit the B key, S to narrow down to your S brushes, and then H will select snake hook. And with a brush modifier at zero, you're basically looking at the surface normal of the object. So if you turn on polyframe here, every one of these faces, and let's also go to our stroke setting here under Sculptures Pro, and I'm gonna make sure by default combined should be on. So now as I drag this out, using my snake hook brush, you're gonna see every single one of these faces has a surface normal or a surface direction that it's pointing in. So with this brush modifier at zero on my snake hook brush, what it's doing is looking at the surface direction of the polygons and then dragging out from that direction. However, if I switch this over to 100 and I drag out, and let's say I'll just corkscrew this, it's gonna drag straight at the camera. If I change this to 50, it's gonna kinda of look 50% at the surface direction and 50% at the camera. So as I move this thing around, it's kinda of doing half and half. So that's basically the difference between snake hook and snake hook two is changing this brush modifier to either be zero at snake hook or 100 at snake hook two. And if you look at the options in snake hook sphere, we can see if we do sphere or cactus, both of those are set at 100. So we already know if we have snake sphere selected, and we'll go ahead and turn our polyframe back on, you can see as we kind of wiggle our brush, it's just gonna pull straight out of the camera. Or if we pull here, it's just gonna pull towards the camera like so. So you can use this as a way to create appendages here. So if we make our brush bigger and kind of pull out and then make it smaller and pull down, you're gonna see we can very quickly start dialing in appendages. Now, of course, it's wanting to come at the camera. If you don't like that, or if you don't like it that intense, you can drop that brush modifier down and it'll follow your stroke a little closer and then all the way down to zero if you really just want to use that surface normal. So feel free to use this to dial in quick body parts here. So instead of using Z spheres like we would have done traditionally, we can really quickly start dialing in appendages just based on that surface normal in conjunction with our snake sphere. And it's also tessellating on the fly, just like you have Sculptus Mode turned on. Of course, if you turn that off, you're going to lose that functionality and it's actually going to behave a little bit weird. So go ahead and keep that on and now it'll go ahead and tessellate as long as you just continue to use this thing. And that's really like, you can see that it's kind of stacking a bunch of spheres along with it. If we go back to Snake Hook, it's eventually going to kind of peter out. If you don't want that, use the sphere version. And again, like I said, you can just continue to draw this thing as much as you want. It's gonna to continue to tessellate on the fly and maintain that density because we do have stroke 
combined turned on, so it's removing density, adding density as needed. This is also another good way if you wanted to do like water droplets, you can go ahead and start a water droplet, and then we're going to go ahead and change that brush modifier so it does go a little bit towards the camera, and we can start just kind of just water dropleting this off so it's like a big splash. And then remember, if we hold down shift, we can actually just tessellate through here so we can start making these things thinner all the way to the point where it actually separates into its own water droplet if we want to. Like so. So you can kind of use that to give you some really cool effects pretty quickly. Or you can make your brush size really big and just go ahead and get rid of those completely. Now I think from a previous video, our brush Alt brush size is set to 2, so as I'm using this brush and then I hold down shift, it actually increases quite a bit. I'm going to change that back down to 1, and there we go. Now it's going to behave a little bit closer to what I would expect. Now another thing you can do with the snake hook sphere, if you want to kind of change it up just a little bit, you can go into the curve, go into edit curve, and as you change this curve and you drag out the sphere, it's going to kind of do different effects, so you can modify this curve as needed to kind of give you a little bit of a different look. And speaking of different looks, and you can also reset this if you need to, to get it to behave normally again. Speaking of, if you go down here to Snake Cactus, you're going to see we have our curve set here, and we also have a brush alpha involved. So think of Snake Cactus as the functionality of Snake Sphere, only with an alpha being passed through it. So if you were so inclined, we can go ahead and just pull a cactus right out of his back here. And of course, since we have that modifier turned on, at 100, if we drop that down to 0, now we can just pull it straight out of that surface normal. And then we can turn that back up to 100, and now we can pull it towards the camera here. So we can very quickly start making cactus-y type shapes, like so. And of course, feel free to swap this out as well. You can change it to a star to get a little bit of a different look. And also change that brush modifier back down to 0 if you just want to pull along that surface normal, as opposed to towards the camera. So. Feel free to swap out these alphas however you'd like, see what kind of results you can get. This alpha doesn't seem to be doing too well. Let's try this one. That's a really cool one. So remember you can change this curve as well as these alphas in order to get that perfect effect and changing the brush modifier to determine how much it pulls towards the camera or from the surface normal.